Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which are more tips and settings for the G1000 NXI that you'll find in aircraft like the Cessna 172 here, these glass cockpit displays. So settings, things like panning the map. Which is very possible actually in the G1000 NXI as you can see here. I'll be showing you how to do that. How to set things like squat cold, talking about things like the nearest tabs and other settings that we'll be discussing and I'll be showing you. So let's not dilly dally, let's get on with the video. Okay, let's get on with the first setting. One that people may not realise is you're able to do in the G1000 NXI. Something I wasn't aware of until one of our Discord members mentioned it. Discord Dave or One More Way Dave. That's map panning. Typically with the old G1000 you can just hold your left mouse button down and you can pan the map. You can do with this, you just got to hold your left mouse button. You do need a, need a mouse. I believe. Hold your left mouse button down over the range knob. Whilst you've got your left mouse button down, click your right mouse button. You'll see a little cursor come up. Now you can release your mouse buttons, use your left mouse button like you could with the old G1000. And there you go, you can pan the map left or right. Bring your mouse back to centre if you don't have enough room when padding. Up or down. Come on. There we go, up or down. So as you can see, it's all very possible, very similar to the default G1000. You just have to enable it by holding your left mouse button and clicking your right. If you do that while you're in padding mode, by the way, it will reset your view. So there you go, I'll just pan along a bit, pan along to the left. Hold my left mouse button and press the right mouse button. It will reset your view over your aircraft. So there you go. It is possible. While we're on that subject of holding your left mouse button down. With the uh, nav and comms here. Now I'm in nav 1. So I can change that using my nav thing here. So if I wanted to set a frequency I could change that. And then I could swap it to active. I've, I've actually got an active on a VOR which I'll be showing you more about this later. But say I wanted to switch to nav 2. Well you can do. Similar to what we did with the range button. Hold your left mouse button. Click your right. It will switch to nav 2 so you can alter the frequencies in nav 2. Hold your left mouse button down. Click your right mouse button, it will click back to nav 1, similar to the COM frequencies. So if you wanted to switch between COM 1 and COM 2, hold your left mouse button down and click your right mouse button, you can switch between them. Okay, let's go on with more tips. Okay, so whilst I'm flying around a rather windy London area... It's blowing my aircraft all over the place, as you can see, but I've got it on autopilot. Let's go to a, a couple more tips. These two will be quite handy for VATSIM. I'll link my getting started to VATSIM guide in the top right for you. And first one will be the squat code. Typically in VATSIM, they'll say set a certain code. And what a squat code does basically lets uh, ATC uh, identify you. They'll give you a unique squat code. That's what the squat code is there by default, I believe. I believe. But they'll give you a unique one so they can identify you on radar. How you would do this in the G1000 NXI, just go to the XPDR button here. Press that. So this is in the top menu. Go to code. And then if they said... Uh, type in a squat code of 7043 for example and then I've just typed that in as you can see it's appeared up here uh, turn it on and then if they want you to identify yourself just press the ident button you'll flash on their radar they, they'll know where you are that type of thing so that's how you set your squat code again go to the XPDR button here on the top menu so this is the top menu on the G1000 NXI Click the button here, go to the cold button, 
and type in 74, for example, 30. This is a code that VATSIM or ATC has assigned to me. 7430. Now that wasn't right, was it? Cold? 7. Uh, let's try that again. Cold. 7. 4. 3. 0. That's better. And then you click the ident button and it will just identify where you are and all that kind of good thing. Another thing with VATSIM, often they'll say set your Q&H. Now basically, that's your Q&H there, your HPA. And there's a couple of different options. Yours may not be showing HPA, it may be showing inches. And the best way to set it in flight or on the ground, just press your B button and it will set it up correctly for you. And typically VATSIM will give you the standard one of the airport before you set off. But how you would change this... Go to your PFD options button here on the top menu. And you've got a thing here called Alt Units. Click on that. And you can set it between inches, as you can see there, inches. Or HPA. And that'll be your Q&H, basically. And that'll be the standard one that VATSIM asks for. So if it's not set up, again, I'll show you that from the top menu. So this is the top menu. Go up to PFD Options, Alt Units. And ensure that HPA is selected here. Uh, that's your Q&H, basically. So that's how you would set that up. And then just press your B on your keyboard. It will set it to the standard one. Unless VATSIM uh, orders you differently. Or ATC, depending on what you're flying. Now the next one. Let's get some way towards it. I'm flying towards the BPK VOR. I don't have a route set up in this flight. I've just set off from London City Airport, which is pretty typical for me. Flying towards the Brookmans Park, I believe it is VOR. I've just set it into my NAV1 frequency, and I've got it on active. How can you tell... Let's get back to the top menu. How can you tell how far you are? If you're flying towards a VOR, how can you tell how far you are from it? Now, we discovered this. This was a community endeavour in one of our live stream flights. A couple of the members of the flight mentioned how to do this. I think I knew how to do it previously. I just couldn't figure it out. But they actually brought it up in a flight and guided me to the right direction here. And how you do this, how you can tell how far you are from a VOR, if you're doing VOR flying, go to your PFD options button again. And then click on bearing 1. Now, because I'm in NAV1, that's the first one that will come up. And there you go. From the BPK VOR, we are seven points, uh, sorry, 10.5 nautical miles out. As we get closer, you can see that's dropping 10.4. So we're not too far from it. So that's how you do it. If you had a frequency set up in NAV2, just press bearing 1 again. It will take you to your NAV2 frequency. Or ADF, press it again, GPS. We don't have any of them set up. We've got the NAV1 set up. And now we're 9.7, 9.6 nautical miles away from it. Obviously, I'm not flying straight towards the center, so I'm just using my hat switch on my velocity one to center the lines here, which means we'll be set flying straight towards that VOR. Anyway, that's just an example. That's how you can tell how far you are from your current VOR you've got set up in your nav frequencies. Let's go on to more tips. And okay, for the last tip I want to show you. Now, this came up in one of my recent videos. I'm not sure which one, but someone mentioned about the nearest knob, uh, nearest button, and what it does. So if you click on that, nearest, it will give you a list of the nearest airport, including the COM frequencies. Not the NAV frequencies, but the COM frequencies. And whether they have an ILS system or it's uh, VFR, so that's visual flight rules. So, for example, if I wanted to get to the nearest one, let's go with uh, London City again. I could use this button here, this knob here, FMS, scroll up with it with the mouse until I get to the frequency there. If I click enter there, it will enter that frequency straight into my COM1. And if I had ATC active, I can hear, to the, I can hear the tower chatter at London City Airport. I don't, but that's how you do that. I don't believe it gives you the NAV frequency, so that you can't set up your ILS from here. Unless somebody knows different. I haven't gone too deeply into this nearest tab. What it does give you, though, is the range, the bearing towards that airport. 
So if I move with my hat switch, so I'll forget about, let's switch my VOR back to GPS. I'm just going to move my heading bug to 142 now. So 142. And it will head, head 141 now. Okay, 140. There we go. And it will basically... There you go, London City 139. It's going to change as your relative position changes in your aircraft slightly. But now I'll be heading back towards London City. How far is it? So it's saying it's 10 nautical miles out, which is not too far out. And I'll keep it up there to prove it. I believe I've got the points of interest on for... There we go, London City, as you can see directly ahead of me. You're heading straight towards the runway there, not... Well, straight towards the runway, but you're not heading straight towards a sort of approach path. Now, I can tell the runway runs this way, because that's the financial district here. So I would have to alter my course to line up with the runway. It's useful to know which way the runways run, if you're going to use this nearest tab. But you can head straight towards it, because it gives you the bearing. So if I wanted to head straight towards this one, I could change my bearing. I've changed my mind to head straight towards... Let's show you that, just for example. So 075, just using my hat switch to move my heading bug, because I'm in heading mode. 074... So I've changed my mind. I just want to land at this airport. So if you're doing VOR flying, you're just flying without a route. And you just think, oh, okay, I want to land now. Click the nearest tab. And then it will give you the nearest airport. And there you go. I'm heading towards this airport now. Now, I've no idea which way the runway runs on this one. So as I get nearer, I'll have to zoom in to see where the runway is. And then adjust my course to land. But that's how you can tell. So if you're just flying blind, you're just flying, uh, yeah, doing a random flight, you've got no course set up, press your nearest tab. It will give you the bearing. Just check, go into heading mode, change your bearing. So you can do that either manually using the heading knob. Or like me, I'll link the video about setting uh, autopilot functions up on the velocity one, for example. And you can use your hat switch to change your bearing knob like that. And there we go. 074 now degrees to that airport and 7 nautical miles out there's an airport here that's tempting me right next to me, no but I'll keep on, I'll keep on course, let's fly to Stapleford airport here or airfield or whatever it may be can I get a recce on it, not yet as I get closer good way to finish the video Excuse my sniffing, I do seem to have developed hay fever now. I've tested myself, it's not COVID again, thankfully. I don't believe. But it's a pain in the backside, especially in this heat. I think the runway is running this way. Now, I could look this up quickly on the internet, but let's just say, for example, keep the realism there. I don't have any maps with me, which probably wouldn't be very realistic. So I don't know which way this runway runs. I can kind of see it now it's running in that direction, isn't it? I believe. So it's giving you the bearing straight towards the centre of the runway, pretty much not the actual uh, approach path off the runway. So do keep that in mind. What I will do, though, slow my speed down to get some way towards flap speed. I can go to flaps under autopilot that way. Running in that direction, I believe. Difficult one to make out from there. I'll get a bit closer. I've slowed down, so I've got plenty of time in a good old Cessna. No need to worry. Whilst we're doing that, I believe someone's flying around me. A couple of names that I kind of recognise. It's maybe because they fly in these areas quite a lot. Maybe. Okay, let's get back to my default view. I've slowed way down now. Let's just speed back up again. I've set my flaps to stage one. Just keep my RPMs up to around 1800 or so. That's fine. 
Can't see. Oh, there's the airfield. Difficult one to spot, so I've got to adjust my route now. Take it off autopilot. Just move my trim wheel slightly so it doesn't go out of sync there. That's fine. Yeah, plenty of time to line up and land at that runway, as you can see. So there you go. I just did that on the fly, as it were. Had no idea which way the runway was running, so I had to get a bit closer towards it. If you've got little nav map and that type of thing running, then it's going to be easier. Uh, any tools at your disposal? There we go. Just get myself... Let's go to flaps 2 now, shall we? Stage 2 flaps. And um, we can just do a quick turn. Left hand turn onto this runway. It should be no issue. Let it get some way towards me. One of the beautiful things about the Cessnas, of course. See a runway rather late. Still got time to adjust. There we go. No issues. No issues. Bring my speed down just so I start descending a bit more. That'll do fine. Not too slow, I don't want to land just yet. Use a bit of yoke action here as well. Yeah, I can just get myself down this runway. No problems at all. As such. There we go. And there we go. God, I want to stop before the end of the runway. Just about. And just come off. To my left here. Just in case other people want to... Fly, come off the taxiway onto the grass. That's fine. A little bit further, please. Just being polite. There we go. That's fine. So there you go. That's more tips and settings for the G1000 NXI. Rather advanced. But I thought, especially if you want to try something like VATSIM, these might be useful for you. Do let me know your thoughts below, give the video a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.